Hey guys, welcome back to our fifth, yes, our fifth uh, episode in this genetic series. Today we're looking at recessive ball pythons. What is recessive ball, what are recessive ball pythons? How does breeding recessive ball pythons work? The hell do we mean by 66% and 50% het ball pythons? Hopefully this video will help you work that out. Let's get started. So guys, today we're gonna look at recessive mutations. So in our last video, we looked at codominant mutations. And if you haven't had the look at that, do definitely check it out. Also check out the um, rest of our series that we've done so far um, so that you can get up to scratch with all the terms um, and genetic jargon, if you will, the, the, the science behind genetics so that it makes this episode easier to comprehend. So we're gonna be looking at recessives. Uh, and we looked at recessives um, in a previous video, we looked at recessive and dominant in our second episode, I believe it was, uh, and we looked at what recessive actually means. So today we're actually gonna look at what inheritance happens, what kind of inheritance we can expect with recessive ball pythons. Uh, and we're gonna use um, albinos, or albinos, whichever way you like to pronounce it. We're gonna be using um, the albinos to um, show off in today's video, essentially. So, a lot of people get confused when we talk about hets um, and how hets work, how, um, you know, the recessive thing in general works. What do we mean by 66% het and 50% het? We're going to cover all of that in this video. And we're going to start off, first of all, by talking about just a simple het albino or albino. So this animal here is actually a het albino. And what we'll know from our previous videos is het is actually short term for heterozygous, okay? Which means this animal right in, here in front of us looks like a normal, looks like a wild type ball python, but it's heterozygous, which means that it has two copies or two different copies of a particular gene. So this animal's genotype, and again, check out our second episode for what these terms mean, but our genotype for this particular animal right here will be albino. And you'll remember that albino or recessive is usually um, shown as a lowercase letter. So we'll say little a. And then the other one would be normal, capital N. So a dominant and a recessive gene. Now remember that we said dominance will suppress the recessive and show through, which is why we see a normal animal here. We don't see the albinism coming through. So what would happen if I took two of these animals right here and bred them together? What would be my results? For this little one who's behaving really well here sits over there for the duration of this video. So if we have um, a female and a male, which are both um, heterozygous, so both little a capital N, right, as their genotype, what could we expect? So let's have a quick look at a Punnett square and what we could expect to make from two het albino um, ball pythons. So we have little a comes down here, capital N, little a here, and capital N. Now, if we do our Punnett square as usual, little a and across little a, come down little a and across N, come down N and across little a, and then finally down and across capital N, capital N. And you'll see here that we've produced, again, three different possibilities. Remember guys, I'll say it again, this is NA and this is AN, but they are the same thing. So they're still heterozygous, one copy of the normal gene, one copy of the albino gene. So these two here would make up 50% of our hatchlings. And they would be, uh, if we move this little one here, they would be basically this guy. So they would be um, capital N little a, which is heterozygous, and it would be a het albino, right? Remember that het stands as an abbreviated form of the term heterozygous. Now, what of the other two animals? So this animal here, NN, we know from the Punnett square that we will have 25%, so one in four, would be capital N, capital N, which is homozygous, normal, okay? Visually, it would be a normal animal. And so will this, by the way, it'll be hair albino, but visually it would be a normal animal. Like the little one here who's, exp who's exploring um, as we are talking. So 
that 25% will be homozygous normal. So it would appear normal, just like this one, but would not be carrying the gene for albinism. And then finally, in our um, Punnett square, we see this here, which is little a, little a. Again, one in four, so 25% of a pairing between a het to a het, right? So two heterozygous animals, we would expect to see uh, little a, little a, which is homozygous, Ooh, fit it in here, homozygous albina or albina. And that would be, remember, when you have two copies of the recessive gene, then the recessive gene can show through. And in this case, you would produce an albina. So two of these animals, one in four of their offspring would be this right here. 25% albinos. Okay, so we've we've seen now what we can produce when you breed two heterozygous or two het albinos. We're using albinos as an uh, example here, but remember this will work with pied, it'll work with clown, it'll work with desert ghost, it'll work with ghost, etc. So we're just using this as an example to show you how it works. Now, this is generally quite easy to understand, but what happens and why do some people sell their animals as 66% het or 50% het? And what does exactly does that mean? I know there's a lot of confusion out there about what that term means. And we're gonna take a look right now. So if I get these two guys away for a second, and we look at the possibilities that we see in, the, in, the, in this sort of pairing, when you have a het to het, you will notice in a het to het pairing, you have um, three animals here, okay? So you have three animals, and sorry, I've just dropped the pen, but you have three animals, which one, two, and three. So if we disregard this one here, which is the visual albino, here we have three possibilities where you could produce an animal that appears to be normal. Now, the problem comes where you can't actually tell visually which of the normals so let's say we hit the perfect odds and let's just go on to a secondary sheet here so we can actually look more carefully so let's talk about perfect odds we would have produced one albina which would be little a little a okay we would have produced one normal which would have been capital n capital n and we would have produced two het albinos, which would be capital N, little a. Now, there is no way to visually tell these three animals apart. All three of these animals, their phenotype or their visual characteristics would be normal, right? So, in this case, all three of these animals here would be labelled 66% het albina. And where does that actually come from? Where does the 66% come from? And what does it actually mean? Well, the 66% comes from the fact that there are three animals in this case that we're talking about, right? And there is one out of three would be normal. And two out of three of them would be het. So two out of three as a percentage is 66% het. And what this actually means is of any normal looking or any visual normal baby that comes from a het to het pairing, okay? So when you breed two heterozygous animals, the possible babies or um, any normal, visually normal babies have a 66% chance of being a het albino. So they have a 66% chance, each animal, there is a 66% chance that it is heterozygous and carrying the gene for albinism. So is in fact an A, but there is no way to tell. There is no way to tell because the normal gene is masking that het albino or, or the albino gene, the recessive albino single copy. There is no way to tell which of the three animals are actually actually albino or carrying the gene for albino and which ones are just homozygous normals okay so where does 50% het come from 
And for that, we need to look at a different pairing. So that those 50% hets would arise from a breeding where you have a het albina. So you have, a, let's say a female who is 100% het. So quickly to the side here, 100% het means definitely, okay? It is definitely carrying the gene for albinism. And that comes from uh, breeding an albino to a normal, which I will show you in just a moment. But here, let's say we have a um, het albino, okay, female, and her genes would be um, one copy of the normal gene, one copy of the albino gene. And she was bred to a normal homozygous, a normal, sorry, homozygous male. Okay, and his genes would be N, N. Okay, he's fully normal, he's not carrying the gene. If we did the Punnett square for this one, you will see that if you take this gene from the female and this gene from, so that allele and that allele, and then you did the alleles again here, you will notice, so if we do the Punnett square, capital N, capital N, capital N, little a, capital N, capital N, and then capital N, little a. And you will notice that in terms of the odds, you have 50%, so if we give me two seconds, if you look at these two here, these two are normal homozygous, okay? So the NA, uh, the, sorry, the NN, and they are homozygous. Whereas with these two here, you will notice that they're actually, uh, so they are het, okay? Het albino, N little a, and they're heterozygous. But what you'll notice is they're all normal. Visually, so this het albino will still visually appear to be normal, okay? So you have four animals so if we, again, hit perfect odds, you have four animals here, but only half of them will be uh, carrying the gene for albinism. But there is no, again, there is no visual way of telling that apart. There is no way of visually telling the homozygous normals from the het albino normal looking animals. So we say there is the, that all of them are 50% het albino because you have for each animal there is a 50 percent chance that any given animal from this clutch is carrying the gene for albinism so any animal that is produced that looks normal so in this in this pairing here every single animal produced would be labeled a 50 percent het albino because every single animal has a 50 percent chance of being albino so there is no guarantee so they, they would need to be what we call proven out and that would come from breeding one of these to another het and producing an albino if you hit an albino then you know for certain that these animals are indeed hets uh, because they are definitely carrying the gene there is no way you could produce it if at least well both parents must at least carry a copy of the recessive gene in order for it to, to be visual in the hatchlings. So this 100% het, well that comes from looking at the pairing between a, let's say again, let's say a female albino, okay, which would have little a, little a, to a normal male, and, and, and immediately you can see the, uh, um, the female must pass on one of these two. So if we just really quickly do the Punnett square here, so little a, little a, capital N, capital N, N, A, N, A, N, A, N, A. You notice 100% every single offspring will be N, A, which is heterozygous. And therefore they will all be het 
albino or carrying the gene for albino. And that's where 100% het albino comes from because you know for certain if you breed a visual recessive animal to a uh, non-visual uh, counterpart, so if you breed a visual animal to a non-visual animal that is not carrying the gene, or even if it is carrying the gene, you know for certain any normal looking animal is definitely carrying the gene for albinism because the parent who is visual must pass on one of the two um, alleles for that trait. And finally, what I'll show is what happens when you breed a visual to a het. And that would be, so if we keep that same female who is an albina and her, she'll be a little a, little a, and we breed her to a male who is het, definitely a het, okay? So this is a het albino. You will see that, here's the female genetics. So little a, little a, the male would be, oh, sorry, either capital N or little a, cross that out there. So you'd have capital N, little a, capital N, little a, little a, little a, little a, little a. So 50% of them will be het, uh, would be uh, capital N, little a, heterozygous, which are, uh, which are basically het albina. And because this came from a visual female, you know guaranteed there are no normal babies here that are homozygous normal. You know every normal looking baby, so this would be a normal looking hatchling, you know every normal looking baby is 100% for sure carrying the gene for albinism. And then the other 50% of this clutch would be, so the other 50% would be little a, little a, and they would be homozygous, so two of the same. Oh. and they would be visually albinos. So guys, hopefully by the end of that video, you now feel much more confident about recessive ball pythons. What we mean by those 50% het and what we mean by 100% and 60% het. And you're more informed in both purchasing new ball pythons and producing them. So hopefully that helped out guys. I really hope this series is helping. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. And until the next episode, we'll see you then. Bye. Thank you.